Hello, good evening, and welcome to Questions of Yalpalor, 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 Awesome. All right. Good evening, everyone. It's Questers of Yalpalor. Questers of Yalpalor is a weekly online improvised adventure game comedy show. My name is Itamar. I'm your host and game master, and I've gathered four hilarious improvisers and actors from all around the world to travel through the lands of Yalpalor with me. We have Matt playing Grubble Bumblin Esquire, a quarterling bubble mancer desperately seeking to reclaim his family fortune. We have Jada playing Triss, a nebulous summoning who has only recently gained sentience, now gleefully exploring life in Yalpalor with their new friends. We have Talia playing Aklis Darkmoor, a traveling death knight with an ancestral sword and lots of family history. And we have Trent playing Dirt Hotbelly. His father is an angel, his mother is a volcano, and he's 100% half rock buddy. Uh, these players are here not just to play their characters. Uh, part of the fun for me is uh, that they're going to invent and flesh out details in the game world. They're going to play other characters. They're going to segue into unexpected scenes and all in all make my job as Game Master more interesting and chaotic than it ought to be. We're playing Macchiato Monsters, which is an old school game in the style of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, the character portraits that you see right next to me, right here on the screen, uh, were drawn by Shani Grimm. Uh, Shani Grimm's Instagram account is linked from the Twitch channel description and from the YouTube video description. You can go there, look at her art, and contact her asking uh, for beautiful art for artwork for yourself. Uh, music is by tabletopaudio.com. Uh, and we are now ready for a word from our sponsor. Oh, just before though, we got the new uh, screens around the side. That's right. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually there's quite a few updates today, n quite a few things that are new. So let's do that before the sponsor. I think first of all, you can already see all of you the new design. Uh, it's a new uh, d screen design layout uh, for our channel. Uh, everything's going to look different from now. Everything is new and shiny and very, very purple. Uh, and uh, you can also see this design on uh, Twitch and on YouTube, like the banners and the titles, everything is different. The logo, uh, the new logo is up. And um, if you scroll down on Twitch right now, you'll see a few more options that you have. First of all, you can click and get to our Facebook or YouTube uh, to see past videos or to interact with us on Facebook. Uh, and you can see the donation uh, panel that you can click on and um, make a, a little donation if you want to. This channel is something that we do uh, uh, just because it's fun for us. Uh, I plan to have a lot more content here. There's already more things happening on Figment RP. Uh, but right now, uh, we're just looking for ways to make the channel better and better. And part of it uh, costs money. This beautiful design uh, costs money. The logo, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the character portraits, all the other things that we do here. Um, and uh, if we uh, uh, have a little bit more, uh, we're gonna be able to make an even better show, better equipment, uh, more graphics, uh, better branding, better uh, actors, <laughs> better, better writing, better, better. G yeah, just everything. We'll just replace everything in the channel with every Massive with other upgrade. things uh, that, well, that are better. That sounds like a perfect segue into the sponsor. Um, to our sponsor, we will get to that goal quicker. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that is a, a, a way for you to support us and make the channel even better than it already is. Um, also, you can see options for you to donate and actually change the game. Right now, it applies to Questors of Yalpalor. When we have other games here in the future, maybe more options will be open. Uh, but right now, it's just ways for us to mess with us while we're playing. I have allowed the players to do things that usually I would not allow players to do in normal games that I run. Uh, so now you also can do that. Mainly, I want to point your attention at the fact that you can increase the forces of order or chaos in the scene. That has to do with a bit of a mechanical change that we're implementing starting today. Uh, this is the chaosometer that you can see here on the screen next to uh, where Grubble and Triss's uh, uh, character sheets are uh, on the on the main screen from Roll20. Um, the chaosometer is a measure of how chaotic the surroundings are and how chaotic the surroundings of specifically the characters, the four main characters uh, are. Um, if it stands on seven, 
and it's in the middle of the range. Uh, it starts from 1, which is the most order, the least chaos in the scene, and 13 is the most chaotic. The higher it is, the more chaos is going to happen. The lower it is, the easier it is going to be for characters to cooperate and control their own fates. It's your choice. Oh yeah, we're all about cooperation. To choose. <laughs> so good. All about fate. So yep, yep. it's your choice. It's your choice to decide whether you want to increase order or chaos. That about that faith. No chaos. <laughs> no grubbing. Oh my god. <laughs> new theme song. Order for all of Boom! Them. New theme song. Um, right. Maybe it's the I'm ending theme tune. It's going to be the ending Bye. theme tune. Um, wow, this is such an interesting show now. Oh my god. He's gone. He just left. I guess. Well, I mean, could you blame him? Oh, well, oh. that was short lived. Do you want to be the life of the party? I do! Do yeah. you want. Everyone to gather around and go, what a cool individual that person is. What would you that could. be like? Then what you need is an ocarina. Is it? Ooh. Is it made of clay? What? Are you actually playing it? Are you? Yeah. Yeah, he's, no, he's straight up playing oh, it. Oh, can I play my thing too? Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, that is not PG <laughs> or acceptable. No, wait, hold on. Everyone Look at this thing. My so friend short. got me this thing. Mm -hmm. And the it sound looks like will, a smoking pipe. The sound will surprise you. I'm warning you in advance. The sound okay. will surprise you. Kill it though. <laughs> no, didn't surprise me. It was like pretty much what I was expecting. Oh, uh, now I can't hear it anymore. It's All too right. high pitched. That's so disappointing. It was lovely though. It's this is going to be bleeped fabulous. out oh, on the YouTube like, version. <laughs> Get yourself yeah. an ocarina, and you can be an Oka winner. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank oh, you very Akia, much. You're Akia, do if you do. And you Thank you very much, Matt, for that beautiful word from our sponsor. Uh, everyone has instruments. We're all uh, uh, we're all about the music in this show. Um, but now it's time to start playing. <laughs> Actually, keep those handy. We might need to use those instruments later on in the episode. Uh, okay. I uh, keep my like... voice, aka my instrument, handy at all times. <laughs> dirt, dirt plays something similar, but it's called a rock arena. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you. Anyway, last episode uh, ended with our characters uh, just having met a dangerous animal beast of the primal forest called the Bear Owl. After a, an encounter that almost turned violent, was very, very close to becoming a real fight. Um, with uh, a little bit of uh, uh, smart choices and crafty use of spells and special abilities, uh, uh, the Bear Owl instead led them to a location uh, of their next quest. They received a quest from a druid named Molly, a druid that is tending the Terra Forest, the forest that they're in right now. Uh, this quest is to investigate a mysterious crash site. And this site is uh, uh, where we're starting today's session. Yeah, the bear owl is uh, leaving, uh, crashing again, not very subtly, just crashing through the undergrowth when he, uh, uh, she, the bear owl uh, mom, uh, who decided that Triss is uh, her, uh, her cub, uh, is just leaving uh, back uh, into the forest and disappearing. As she leaves, does she make a noise? Uh, yeah, it's like crashing, like bra breaking no, with, with, with roots her mouth. and branches. No, her no too cord. far for that. It's way too far for that already. Oh, you can true. barely. Oh, hear. but it's okay because because no. Triss makes it as a baby noise to say goodbye. Oh. Yeah. So oh, you sure. just hear like a very sad but like very happy as as the feathers sort of just recede in, knowing they're no longer necessary. Mm -hmm. You just hear a. <laughs> Well, that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Baby bear owls are terrifying. They look like they should be adorable, but they will actually rip out your guts. In front of you. I've never seen a bear owl before. I always mix. What's up? I always mix them up with owl bears myself. I oh, know they're completely different animals. Right. Wait, wait. That's a bear owl. That's right. Like the feathers that you 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 have. I just thought it was a new friend. Ooh. You know, both things can be true at the same time. It it is. But, but in this case, they're not. No, they were definitely our friend. <laughs> I mean, if your if your scale of are they my friend, yes or no, is are they actively trying to kill me? No. 
then there, my friend. By but they told standards. us where we wanted to go. And <laughs> they brought us here. And and they but, uh, they gave me cuddles. But where is here? What do we see? In front of you, uh, there is a, a loca- uh, an area completely clear of trees. Obviously, the same uh, uh, dense forest grew here. Uh, as uh, uh, just as you see around you uh, until a few, maybe a couple of months ago when a huge object, object crashed from the sky and just completely demolished an entire area of this forest. This object at first looks just like a piece of rock but pretty quickly you notice that it's actually not made of rock, especially uh, dirt uh, um, but all, all the rest of you, uh, almost immediately you will see that it's uh, reflecting the light uh, and the surfaces are too straight and smooth to be rock. It is an immense object or even structure made of metal. Uh, some panels of glass uh, are fixed, set in certain locations as if they were windows. Uh, looking into inside spaces, uh, but other than that, it's just a big piece of metal. Uh, and in fact, uh, to this one side of it, you see an opening leading inside. This whole structure is radiating heat. It's hot, and the remains of the plants around it are smoldering, c- constantly giving out uh, a black smoke that is billowing up and into the sky. Um, other than that, there's no sounds. There's some some sounds of like the, the wind through the trees and small animals of the forest behind you, but in front of you, uh, uh, no sound. Nothing moves uh, or rustles or. This is just draws like the beginning touch. of animorphs. I go, I go up and I touch it, and I say, "It's hot." <clears throat> I can tell it's hot from here. I hug it. I'm gonna. In fact, it's so hot. I'm gonna take off my cravat. That's how hot it is. Ooh. Your uh, your rocky exterior gr- uh, scrapes against the metal, uh, but feels uh, good. And, and it's it's um, it's high quality refined metal. It's it's probably going to be pretty nutritious for you if you ate it. Um, and other than I'll that, look ar- I'll, yeah, I'll I'll scan around and see if there's like small chunks of it somewhere that I can like pocket away for later. Hmm. Um. Yeah, so around like you... Like a metal house. Why is it so hot? Uh, you can definitely see some uh, pieces of broken uh, broken metal from the walls of this thing. Some of them have shattered, especially around the opening leading inside. Uh, and there's some shards you can pick up. It's worth the uh, D6, uh, D6 of, uh, of uh, nutritious food for you. Can we, like, uh, peek inside without going inside? Yeah, I mean it's quite dark, so you'll have to find a way to light your way in inside the structure. But but peeking inside is, is easy enough. Uh, and there's some light, some faint light through the windows from above. You see a corridor leading inside, and then immediately, uh, um, immediately open up, opening up into several several different openings. It seems to be spread like uh, uh, going in many different directions, and, um, and nothing really draws your attention. Uh, but it's all a, a perfectly straight square corridor. Somebody built this from metal. Uh, Triss, yeah. Nothing catches our attention. Nothing at all. Uh, nothing from the outside, looking at the object, except for everything uh, I described, which is yeah, right. catches your actually your attention in a big in a big way. Because because I I would just say that in in general, mm-hmm. Triss looks at places that we can go into, especially if they're dying and goes, ooh, wonder what that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's a big opening. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, like a, like a sound to like, try and call out like a hoo-hoo, but like a rock version of that. Uh, you do this in, uh, <clears throat> oh, like, Earth? Yeah, in Earth, so it's like a, <laughs> kind of a noise. The vibration takes, and you feel the walls vibrate very, uh, very strongly under uh, your hand. But nothing there responds. There is nothing natural at all about this structure. I think that uh, that we should probably just try to go in. Trouble. I'd like to like put one foot inside. 
because it's metal on the floor as well, isn't it, inside? Mm -hmm. I just want to put one foot inside, just one on its own, just to see if my foot gets hot. How hot is it for my feet? Is my yeah, feet. It's, uh, it's, it's warm in a way that makes it a little bit uncomfortable, but it doesn't burn you. It doesn't... It's right. okay. not going to ruin your boots or anything. Okay, well, it's not going to ruin my boots, everyone. Well, that's right. Well, let's go. And, and, and Tris kind of like pats, because Tr Tris has at this point come back onto their normal perch <clears throat> on Atlas and starts just sort of like patting at their shoulder, like, come on, Atlas, let's go. All look. right, all right, but uh, let's be careful about this. Um, shall we sneak inside the house? <gasps> yes, let's and... sneak. Yes, let's sneak. <laughs> yeah, Twist. that's what Twist. I said. This, this... This time when you sneak, just uh -huh. as a new exciting variation on sneaking, I see if you can sneak without the humming. Okay. I can do the humming if you do the sneaking. Perfect. Hum 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 We're sneaking down the roads. You're not humming, I'm singing. We're sneaking. We're sneaking. I think we're, we're, we're progressing down the corridor doing this, and I've got my head in my hands. <laughs> uh, Atlas looks at Grebel and just kind of points outside, like, should we? What? Should we? Uh, oh, never mind, never mind. Let's uh, Atlas, go. Atlas, what? <laughs> oh, nothing. Uh, let's keep going. Okay. What would you like as we speak? Down the corridor, you should make all your things <laughs> sad. Walking in, uh, the floor is uh, actually a uh, uh, fine mesh <laughs> made of metal that is uh, quite uh, springy under your, uh, your feet. It's very comfortable to walk on. It's still made of some kind of shiny material, uh, but it's not, it's not hard. It's, it's very comfortable, like a nice uh, carpet. Um, Weird. And uh, Maybe um, it's a to person. your right and left, some of these openings turn out to be uh, glass windows, interior uh, glass windows uh, that look into rooms. Um, one room just has uh, one big table uh, in the middle of it uh, and just ruins of furniture around it. Everything else is broken and completely shattered. The other room on the other side of the corridor uh, is uh, looking into... Uh, a uh, room that seems more of uh, like a workspace. There's many counters and tables spread around the room with space for people to walk around them and some sort of machinery on these tables, different kinds of machines. Um, mm -hmm. You uh, walk a little bit uh, down the corridor, uh, you see um, more uh, doors and windows looking into other rooms. Some of them, uh, uh, they, they look like a bunch of these rooms that seem to be geared for some kind of work. Some of them seem to be uh, maybe lounges or uh, places to hold meetings or places to work, although you have no idea what they, their purpose exactly is. Uh, yes, Grubble. You say machines, it's more sort of industrial-like. You're not saying it's like, um, um, if, it, if it were a magical machine, I might know something about it. But if it's an industrial machine, I, I, I know very little. Right, so it looks like nothing you've ever seen before. Uh, it's right. some kind of non-magical thing, probably, but you've, you haven't seen an industrial machine like that as well. I think this is like some kind of factory, everyone. Factory what? for what? Well, I haven't <clears throat> got that far, just that it seems like a factory. What is a factory? A factory is a building where they make things, but not just like one at a time, but they make many things at once. Like summonings? So like a mill? Yeah, a mill is like a kind of factory. Wait, so they, they just sort of Wait, make... Wait, you say mill or meal? A meal. Oh, right, meal. maybe I misunderstood. No, so a factory is making, not on, is not like a meal. But I can a meal eat is, No, I'm sorry, I confuse you there, Dirt. It's not like a meal at all. It's like a mill, but nothing like a meal. What is a meal? What is a mill? A mill is like a big building, often with water or uh, or wind on 
a wind but like thing. This on the isn't outside. a big building. And this isn't a water park either. Okay. It's a shiny metal rock. This is this is a type of factory. And a mill is a different type of factory, but they're quite different. Maybe this is a fiction. So a factory is something that you eat? Man. No, oh, not usually. People are also to answer your question, Tris, I've never seen a summoning factory. Well, so it's just but... you you were saying that it was when things are made like like lots at the same time. That's right. But but then they eat them? No, 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 that was dirt misunderstanding. Maybe, so a factory is something that is real. Maybe if this is not real, then it is a fictionary. Could be. You, I mean, do you get. Or I like, or like pictionary? Do you like, think there's going to be like. Or non fictionary? Let's just continue. Ooh, a non fictionary is a factory. Find out. That's right. <laughs> okay. What about a sci fictionary? <laughs> it could well be. I don't know enough yet, guys. You're asking me a lot of questions. That's true, well, because I... if this this is kind of like a thing that we think might not be from this planet, so it's kind of like a science Wait, fictionary. We don't that... uh, sorry? I told you I, I told you before before when we met before we met the bear owl or the owl bear or whatever that mama thing was that Tris really liked. I said that uh, that it sounds to me like a meteor, which is a thing that's not from this planet that comes down from the sky and Wait. it's my cousins. There, right, she had a name. It, it was clearly a building. But I'm not, confused. not really. I, I, when you, when you said meteor, I was like great big rock, right? This isn't a great That's big rock. That's kind of what this is, no? No, no. it's a, it's a metal uh, house. Or uh, you see a house, but I see uh, you know a big rock. It's that's where that's where we well, that's where we is, live. You think well, we do have different sky. perspectives on the matter. That's okay. You think but this yes. thing that we're in fell from the sky? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Tris um, has given up on this whole conversation and has gotten off of Atlas and has gone to the table absolutely convinced that somehow they're going to find something that is going to... that that is basically going to like almost like magically populate something else because they're either convinced that this is something to make lots of factories or that this is meals for peoples and either way it's confusing. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, so um, you're 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 go you're walking towards one of the devices, one of the machines on the yeah on the tables. Sure. So one of the desks has uh, uh, something that looks like a, a big box with many buttons and dials on it. Um, you can just start playing with it if you want to. Don't. Um, so um, yeah, how about you? Uh, just for sheer luck, roll a d twenty. Um, this is gonna end so badly. Just, just a die roll, just one regular. And nineteen. Tw nineteen. Nineteen is not very good in this system. You want to roll as low as possible, of course. So, nineteen means that you start uh, uh, clicking on these buttons. Uh, some of them light up. Uh, in fact, the entire box uh, lights up uh, on its uh, top side. The the. the uh, the lid, the top lid of whatever it is, uh, it lights up and then it opens up and there is a uh, uh, a sphere that comes up. It's attached by some kind of mechanism to the inside of the box. A sphere comes up, it turns to you, there is a lens on the front and it uh, just lets out a beam of light and washes over you. It just puts you like in a, in a spot of bright yellow light. And then a voice mm -hmm. says... Intruder! Intruder! What? Hi! Get out immediately! Intruder! Intruder! Ooh. Oh my god! We're friends! Hi! My name is Tresisterus! Uh, uh, I'm gonna take... Dirt, Dirt's gonna take his... my... Uh, my... Uh, pitchfork and just... like, chuck it. <laughs> directly okay. at the... the intruder! The intruder! Go, Get like, out! Right intruder! In uh, roll... So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what, Tristeris? What did you do? I was gonna say if he d if Dirt does this, which is amazing, uh -huh. uh, it will definitely like probably pass like right past Tris. Oh so yeah. So it'll be like Tris is like really excited, like hi, <laughs> and and then there's just like. Uh, let's see. Roll dexterity. Me? No. Nope. Dirt. Boom. Yes. Rolls a six, Double which means six. the uh, uh, pitchfork flies right above your head, like a couple of inches uh, above uh, uh, Triss's form, and just 
cl just uh, um, breaks the me mechanism, and the sphere just goes flying through the air and breaks, shatters on the floor. Uh, the sound <laughs> stops immediately. It goes quiet. Sure, that wasn't uh, very nice. Dirt's gonna take his hand and go, because there's a little, there's a little lava s smoke coming out of it. It looks mm -hmm. pretty cool. Oh. Could have been our friend. No, it was calling you intruder. That means it doesn't like you. Maybe he just didn't know my name yet. No, that's the thing that we were doing when we were at Aklis's house. We were kind of intruding, so. I wasn't intruding. They invited uh, no, me. No, you were invited. You were my guest. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they liked us there. I seem to recall. I mean, you we stole like things. Friend. We all you... stole something. I you, you all not. stole things from my house. I was I... given it as a gift. Uh, I know you, guilted, like, you guilted my mother into gifting you some of her belongings, but uh, let's not dwell on the past. <laughs> I... uh, out of the corner of Atlas's eye, they may see like Triss sort of like poking a little bit of a spoon back inside. Oh no, uh, wait, Triss doesn't have a spoon anymore. Never mind. Nope. Triss just looks really sad. I want to go into the bit where Triss is and see if anything else is moving. Um, so it's broken. It's still lit up in some places. The buttons and the inside of the machine, it's it's still lit up uh, with some kind of light-giving uh, um, machinery inside. Right. Well, I have no idea how any of this works, but I don't think Dirt broke it completely. Perhaps no, we should not. try and see if there's any living creature in this place. Do you have an ability to, to sense if there's a living creature? Uh, yeah, after... I have an ability to sense if there's a dead creature. Oh, that's a good place to start, because if right. there's a dead thing... I then... mean, I, I just said I did, but... Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, GM, do I can I sense dead things, please? Dead things? Uh, I think <laughs> it makes sense that you would be... Um... It yes. does. Death sense! Especially, especially aware, yeah. Detect death. Do you want to? Do that? I, I'd no, like no, to no, detect no, no, death, no, no, no. please. So you certainly are able to detect things that go against the natural order of life and death. That's definitely something you're able to uh, to detect. But maybe if there's something that's naturally dead or recently dead, you'll be able to be a little bit more attuned to that than most most other people. So um, yeah, I think it'll be a wisdom roll for you. Oh, great. And you get advantage, of course, because you're a death knight. Oh, uh, where's my thing? Mm -hmm. Wisdom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got it. A I'm six wise. Is nice. success, and that means that you uh, you do um, you do feel something um, something that is um, um, like a very a very faint pulse from deep within the structure. Uh, somewhere, somewhere in the middle, uh, you can you can just generally point to where it is. There is some creature that is somewhere between life and death, in an in between state, which is a little bit weird and unusual. Oh, uh, I, and can I can I tell the direction it's coming from? Yeah, you can you can tell the general direction it's coming from. Right. Well, there's. Something in that direction, there. Right. Uh, but I it feels weird. Right. Ooh. I mean, everything about this place is weird to me. So that's true. Is it also? But this this feels weird in a in a in a uh, deathy way. Oh right. Ooh, let's go look. I was okay, going to suggest but... we go towards where it's hottest and try and turn off the heat maker, but I think let's do this first. I, I have a I have an idea, but I want to, you know, ask if it's maybe something you think is a good idea or if you think I shouldn't do it. But I would say, what if I make a little bit the tremor and I use that to tr try and, you know, shake up whatever's around. Maybe we hear them screaming or something. Right, but we already know where we're going. Kind of, but... Maybe it comes to us then. If we didn't know but, where we were going, Dirt, this might be useful, but in this case... And uh, your tremors might hurt someone whom we do not wish to hurt. I'm getting better. They're not oh, always you are, so you are. That's true, and it's very good that you asked us. But I think in this case, um, it's better to take a look-see first. 
Can I maybe do it later then? Of course. Do you but uh, ask first. Okay. I just bring my lava laser. Do you know when it would be good, Dirt, is if we're about to set up camp somewhere. Why? And it's in the middle of the night, and we don't want anything sneaking up on us. You could do a little tremor and scare everything away. Or, or just you know, broadcast to the whole yes. area that we're there. Bad idea, Grebel. Oh, right. Yeah, well, you know, you're not... no longer the leader. That I never one was one the leader. Ideas. I don't often have good ideas, it's true. We have a leader? No, no, I don't think Chris. so. Chris? Yeah? You let's are the go. leader now. Oh, okay, let's go to death things. <laughs> right, we're following you, Atlas. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Tris gets back on Atlas. All right. Backless. All righty then, let's go in that direction. Atlas, you lead the way <laughs> down the corridor. Death things, death things, sneaky death things. The, um, um, Very sneaky. The hallway ends with uh, a, a door, a closed door. Uh, it doesn't have any handle on it or apparent way to open it. You sure um, this is the right way, Atlas? It's a dead <clears> end. <throat> well, I see what you did there, Grubble. That's very clever. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yes, it sound. does seem to come from this direction, beyond this door. Do you want me to go through it? Can you? Well, if I find a crack, then I could, uh, I don't remember the word. I think you called it discombobulate. Anyway, I could go through a crack. <clears throat> right, um, but perhaps if you see anything, uh, try not to be seen by it and come back and report before doing anything else just a suggestion you know if you think that's the you want me to be sneaky that would be help great, you yes um, 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 okay. um, I, while Tris is doing that i think i want to try and have a look at this uh this blank wall see if i can figure anything out about it if there's any buttons like there were in the other room for example all right, uh, Tris, you're looking for a crack or doing something more active? I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, I'm sort of, I, I've basically made myself into a sort of, not even a smoke, like even more transparent, even more flimsy than that. Yeah. Something that I know could, could go through even the smallest of cracks or entrances, and I'm looking for a way to get in. Okay, cool. Um, I'll send Lohi with. Um, Just to be cute. Let's start with Grebel, uh, walking uh, up towards the, the door. Um, there is um, something on the wall next to the door that looks like a, um, a, a plaque of some sort that's like barely, uh, barely uh, you can barely see it against the wall because it's made of the same material, uh, but it's like a separate piece of metal. Right. It doesn't, a plaque though, is, how, how big are we talking? Um, uh, right, about right. Uh, uh, the width of like two hands. Okay, right. Well, uh, I'm just gonna push against this, everyone, to just get ready in case something happens. Right. And you I won't help. With, I push it with two hands. Uh, yeah, it I pops hold out. on to my morning star. <laughs> it pops out. It just falls into your hands, uh, oh. and behind it, there's more buttons. Oh. Um, Tris, you walk up to the door, you look at it, uh, you are um, surprised and maybe disappointed to find that it's actually hermetically closed. It's it's more tight than any door has any business to be. But when <laughs> Grebel, uh, the, the panel just pops out and is left in Grebel's hands, you suddenly feel that there is some current of air coming from, from there, inside, inside the, behind the plaque. Uh, there's something, some cracks there that you can squeeze through. A crack! All right. Uh, use up one of your um, corporeality abilities. Yep. Uh, and you can just squeeze through the um, uh, the opening, small op openings there, and out the same uh, kind of uh, opening in the other side of the wall. Obviously, Lohi cannot follow Triss <laughs> there. <laughs> Lohi cannot squeeze into uh, uh, microscopic openings. But Triss can. Be well, while you're going through... Um, 
Uh, roll constitution, please. Uh, also, what you hear is smoke in the panel. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. A failure means that um, you go through some openings. Uh, you mm -hmm. you sift through like it's like it's it's a it's like a mesh, and the mesh is made of small wires. Uh, and when you touch some of these wires, there's um, uh, what feels like a tiny crack of lightning that passes through you. Um, you're suddenly you're you're hit with with uh, a sharp pain throughout your body when this thing just flows through you like a lightning through a cloud, and you take. Um, Does it fry the panel as well? Well, first of all, you take seven points of damage. Wow, that's a Ooh, lot. That's a lot. When you're uh, partially fried, you are ejected through the other side of the wall, and you find yourself uh, uh, completely on the other side. And uh, yeah, Grubble, you see this this uh, little little crackle inside, and uh, then the door opens, just slides open. And and when you get in, uh, Tris Tris literally, I think, got through the panel and just went. Thump. You did it, Tris. You opened the door. Uh, are you okay? Ooh, shinies. Oh no. Um. Uh, it is very dark here. Uh, I would like to remind you that from that point onward, you will need um, some source of light, some way to light your way. The cracks on dirt are shiny. Right. I can. Uh, I can get out my my lantern. No. Do you know what they called me when I was in um, rock school? They called me crackhead. <laughs> the Why? other rocks not as cracky as you. No. Did they crack jokes? No. Were they jawbreakers? No, I don't. I don't think so. Were they constantly baldering you? <laughs> yes, that's what I like. Was were they marvelous? Most of them were stoners. They sound granite. They were. <laughs> can I try and light my lantern? Yes, you can. Uh, do you Atlas. have uh, anything like for oil or lantern oil? Oh, okay, sure. So yeah, you light up your lantern. It's going to be on for a while. Uh, take the risk die down to a d6. Some of the oil okay. is used up. Um, uh, there is uh, a bunch of corridors there, crisscrossing, and now it's not openings to other rooms, but really to other hallways going down different directions. Uh, Atlas, you still feel uh, what you felt before. It's a little stronger now, and it's from right up ahead. A little bit stronger now. Uh, Atlas. Um, uh, yes. Um, hey. Everything's very far down here. Could I go back up there? Oh, and my shoulders, need... of course. Chris, do you need some kind of, like, you know, healing or something? Five, just size of your hand. I take that to be a yes. <laughs> um, I'm gonna... Wait, can I apply healing balm to... I don't think it'll work. It won't work on Triss. No. It's not gonna work on Triss. No, Triss has healing? other rules oh. for healing. Mm-mm. I, so clearly we have to get to death things because that might heal Triss. But but Triss is discombobulated, guys. Yeah. Discombobulated. I thought that's what you were trying to do, get discombobulated. But now I'm discombobulated. Let's, uh, let's, it's, it's right up ahead, I think. Okay. I right. like your shoulder, Achilles. It's very <clears throat> comfortable. How, uh, thank how you. Wide is the that's very kind of you. Is it a wide corridor, Game Master? Um, you uh, uh, you walk ahead. There's more. Uh, there's more rooms and windows and doors, and there's more hallways that open up to both the right and the left. Um, there's uh, there's definitely many things that used to serve a purpose here. Along the walls, there's there's um, windows to nowhere. Just dark, black, dark windows that don't have anything behind them. There's uh, things that look like uh, uh, windows in the ceiling, but again, they're just they're just dark. 
um, uh, doesn't really it's not really clear where they're supposed to be uh, um, where they're supposed to, to look uh, look up uh, into uh, and um, the floor is again this comfortable mesh that's uh, uh, very comfortable to step on even though it is made of some something that's not cloth or fabric um, you um, uh, you keep walking so uh, in, in terms of light in the corridor there's me at the front mm -hmm. and then there's, there's the cracks on dirt and then there's halo. doesn't doesn't oh dirt's halo and doesn't low heat glow in the dark a little bit uh i think um uh it does right it does glow in the dark he, he shines he's not like an angler fish but like he you know he 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 reflects whatever little light sources there are so you can see him but he doesn't really provide light i imagine those uh glow in the dark stickers you know that just glow very faint yes. green yeah, so something like the very stars thin. above your bed. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, the stars that, that Triss is seeing right now. No, he comes. <laughs> no, he, he comes. How many Lohis are there? I see three. Still uh, just the one. Oh. Grebel, oh, you're walking ahead, so roll your wisdom. Oh. What am I doing? Roll wisdom. Okay. Why? <laughs> you find that's good. what I want to know, too, but here we go. Wisdom. Wisdom. It's twelve. Uh, twelve. No, is a but you failure. have advantage. <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm doing. No, I no. Formal education doesn't. doesn't help here. Uh, to notice the thing in front of you, um, you almost run into somebody standing there in the middle of the hallway. Uh, oh. It's uh, it's it's a figure in armor, kind of like Atlas's armor, but it's not black and stylized like a Death Knight. It's just a full plate armor, like a warrior or a knight. Uh, he's standing with his back to you, looking on to the other uh, in the other direction. Um, uh, so you don't sneak up to to him. So he turns uh, and looks towards you. Uh, the um, the visor is down, and he has a a, a big great sword, double handed, uh, that's uh, on his back. He um, and. Uh, he says, uh, Hello, are you here to join my quest? No, oh, bloody hell, you gave me a fright. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, you have uh, snuck up behind me, not the other way around. Oh, who goes there? Well, uh, uh, I should be asking you that. Uh, anyway, me? my name is Hugh. Hugh the Giant. Hi, I'm Trisisteris. Hello, Trisisteris. Uh, how uh, about you, young the, man? Uh, what is your name? Feeling coming from that person? Nope. Oh. When you said, when you said young man, was he talking to me or yep. like dirt? To you. Oh, hello, uh, I'm, I'm Grebel. Grebel? Nice to meet you, young Grebel. Uh, any of you uh, has a, a strong sword arm? A what? A wow. strong sword arm. A sword arm? arm? Quite what strong. Is a sword arm? Uh, we have a strong sword and a strong arm. Good, good. Oh. You're talking about yourself, Grubble? Uh, myself, I, I have, well, I'm no, not really. I do have this, and I uh, bring out my swish knife. Oh, oh, no, no, that won't do at all. I'm here to vanquish evil, not to play games. Uh, if what none of you... Of you... Very, very kind. I mean, uh, any of you can hold, uh, 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 help me in a fight in any way. Sure, but we don't all need Perhaps. swords. We have different skill sets. Uh -huh. How so. about you tell us about this fight that you're going to fight, and we will decide what to do with that information once we have it. This fight. Or uh, let me tell you about you. this fight that I am going to fight. Uh, this fight uh, is a fight against intruders. Any particular intruders, or just in general, anyone who intrudes? Yes, uh, they are particular. There are four of them. Well, good job there's five of us. Oh, yes, <laughs> five of us. Wait a minute, I have a question. Are we the intruders? Yes, he draws his sword and he steps forward towards Grubble. Uh, let's... Why am I always on the front line in these things? Uh, yeah, Why yeah. Was you are the leader. It happened again. <laughs> That's not very friendly. 
This is why I was asking earlier about the size of the corridor, because I wanted to know if I was walking side by side with Atlas or in front of them. Not friendly. Okay. Yeah, next time Atlas should go first. <laughs> Uh, but now okay. Grubble is first. So uh, everyone, tell me what do you do? Nobody's surprised. Anyone can. Everyone can act during this first round. Uh, Grubble, let's start with you because well, you're up ahead. I'm. I'm not really equipped for using magic because I've got a lantern in one hand and mm. I've got my swish knife in my other. Mm, yes. Um. So what I'm going to try and do is jump backwards. Jump backwards. Excellent. That is an excellent, uh, an excellent choice. Out of choice. the reach of a great sword, perhaps. Atlas and Triss, you're behind Grubble. Triss, you're on Atlas's shoulder. What do you do? Uh, Triss burps, and a stone shoots at him. A sto- Oh, okay. You just you throw a stone. Uh, yep. uh, you burp a stone at uh, uh, you, the giant. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, next is, uh, Atlas. What do you do? Uh, I swing at him with my morning star, I guess. Sure, Swing-out. that's excellent. And Dirt, you're uh, behind I, everyone else. I look at Atlas and we go like that. And we, we <laughs> help each other. And, uh, while helping each other, we, I also attack. Um, but I will use my lava laser to attack. Your lava laser, excellent. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So right. In, in, in like the slots of his of his armor helmet. You try to yeah. You try to shoot between the plates of the armor into yeah. Sure. Uh, that's definitely uh, possible to try. So let's start with um, uh, Grubble because you're the closest one. He just swings. He just draws the the great sword, double hander. And just swings down right at you, tries to swing at you, and then if he misses you, to, to hit one of your friends behind you. But you're first, so roll dexterity to evade. Nope. Nope, you did not evade, so you're the one he hits. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, seven points of damage. Uh, also, in addition to that, he is uh, he hit you quite mightily. Uh, you fall down on the floor. The lantern, uh, uh, you, you let go of the lantern, uh, you're now prone on your back, and the lantern just rolled uh, uh, to the side. The light is starting to go out. Soon it will be quite dark. Uh, second is Atlas, because you just stride forward and just hit him, so you can roll strength. Okay. Uh, d- does he look uh, human, this person? Uh, well, it's hard to see inside the armor. Uh, he right, sounded right, right. human. So, strength. Yep. Yes. And that's two, two strikes. Yeah, it is two strikes. So uh, roll your damage twice. Okay. That's once. And that's twice. Mm, nice. Eight points of damage is two strikes with a morning star. One uh, from the right, one from the left. Uh, Triss, uh, do you, when you uh, throw the rock, when you burp the rock, are you still on Atlas's shoulder? From up there? Uh, unless... I've fallen off. <laughs> no, no, I think it's pretty easy for you to, to uh, hang on. Like, again, this is all similar to the bear owl. Triss is very incapacitated. And it was more just like, it kind of got lodged. And what's up, Grubble? I was going to ask where I got hit, because I've got armor. I've got the gambus on. Should I roll that? Yes, you can. You... Sorry, carry on. No, just Triss is, Triss, is, Triss is maybe becoming slightly more aware. I don't know if summoning so adrenaline. So wait, you're but... down to four before the attack, Rubble? Uh, yes, but now I'm down to six, because... Sorry, no. Uh, oh. I, I had lost three Yeah. in the last encounter. Okay. I've just taken seven more, but now it's only five more, because my armor took two of it. Excellent. Okay. Uh, okay sorry. Yeah, Tris, go ahead and roll dexterity to throw the rock. Oh, sorry. Who rolls dexterity? Uh, Are Tris. You still talking to Matt. Oh, okay. What's your action? That is a success. Sure. How much damage does the rock do? I have no clue. I have a d10 of rocks. Um, That's all I got. Uh, the raw, it should say what damage it does in there. If it's not, it's just usually a d4. Uh, just to, uh, then I'll uh, just do roll a d4, because yeah. it, it just says bag of stones. Sure. If, if not, you have to smell what the rock is cooking. Four. Nice. Four is and, not and, bad. And what you see, basically, is like, sort of... 
and it's just sort of like, but it, but it doesn't come out of their mouth because Trist doesn't really have a mouth. It comes out of like their stomach area, which is <laughs> relatively acceptable. It's where they put things, so it, it makes sense. <laughs> and it just sort of like slams into the bridge of the helmet. Oh. So there's uh, a... Yeah, and, and Trist goes, sorry. Uh, there's a grunt. He goes, oh, that, that's very nice. That's very Miyazaki, what just happened here. You just burp out of your body, uh, burp yep. a stone straight ahead. It's a short arc, bang on the helmet, and he goes, oh, uh, fiend, foul enemies, intruders. Uh, and he uh, starts swinging the sword again. But first, Dirt, you get your action. Um, yeah, I was helping. Oh, you're helping in the sense of you're foregoing your action and helping Atlas, or Yeah, that's what I was trying to do, but... So I, the description you gave kind of didn't make that clear because you said then, you're using your lava laser attack. to actually hit him. <laughs> yeah. So you can then just, I just attack. Yeah. Just go ahead and do that. Uh, lava laser. You need to pay hit points for that. I do. Want to roll your faith die? Yeah, from my magma mini. Yep. Boom. Excellent. You get six hit points. Lava laser is how much? I believe it's four. Yes, four. Pay four and deal your damage. Oh, sorry. Roll wisdom first. I, I'll just take the damage. I'll just... <laughs> boom. All right. That's a hit. Now roll damage. Uh-huh. Nice. Wow. Chakalaka. Nice. Um, Chaka raka Wait. So you've dealt 11? Wow. It says, It says my damage is 2d8 on the... Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, so plus four and eight from Atlas before. So, yeah, this um, epic fight is now suddenly over. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you the giant. Right between the slots. Yeah, you uh, the giant takes the stream of uh, lava, the directed uh, uh, stream of, of lava uh, from Dirt's mouth right into the visor uh, of the helmet. It splashes on the visor and inside there's a, a yell, a cry, then a grunt, Ugh! and he falls down, um, exemplifying the phrase, uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. He falls quite hard on his back. Uh, there is a clang of the armor falling down when he crashes into the ground and then he doesn't move anymore. It's a I, shitty way to die. Yeah. I run up to him and I pick him up. <laughs> we we barely knew him. <laughs> right. Why, why did he think that we were intruding? <laughs> we intruded uh, into this uh, metal. Hey, I mean, there's place. different ways of dealing with intruders, and immediately no, of course, of slicing course. them with a great I sword is not. I wasn't trying to. Did you see justify. that awesome shot that I killed him with? It was pretty that was cool. Very, that was very good, Crabble. Uh, we might as well see if he has anything on him. I was definitely in trouble, so thank you, the three of you, for uh, <laughs> keeping me alive. I, Tris I, wanted I, just, I, I, I pick up the lantern, by the way, so it doesn't keep spilling oil on the floor. And Tris, I toss him the Tris healing wants bomb. to do something. Tris, go ahead. Uh, so, the great sword double handler, uh, does it, is it a magical item? Uh, I mean, now that you said so, um, I, I guess it has to be because it has a name now. Yes. Uh, also, uh, we wrote it into the into the into the Twitch chat the way that it should be. It's it's called. It, it is written this way. One second. Double double. Double handa. Double handa. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, regardless, uh, the question still stands: Is it a magic object? Um. I mean, I'm pretty sure that uh, because of your specific properties, you would actually know uh, if it's magical from being That's... in close proximity to it. So yeah, you, you feel and you know that it is. So before anyone can stop Triss, because you guys are kind of blubbering over the corpse and feeling bad. Uh, <laughs> and searching Triss, it. Triss, and getting Triss, healed. And searching it, which valid choice. Uh, Triss goes to double handa and go, you. Look really nice, <laughs> and consumes it. Dirt stops to watch the whole uh, thing, and he's just like, so. What it looks how, like, how to long be fair, does it is, take? is it like so a it's, a, it's a big axe slowly devouring something? It's the big axe, and it, it's not like for whatever reason. Like when you see Tris pull out like the bear owl feathers or Shufsa, like it's more of like a. But with this, it's 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 like Tris like 
for whatever reason is getting bigger and it, it's it, like you can tell this sword is never coming out this sword is never coming back it's just it's being consumed by it and as Tris consumes it uh, they get to heal up to a full HP mm. and perform an awesome one-time magical feat. Grebel. Fueled by the power of Double Handa. Grebel, roll your intelligence, please, and you get advantage oh, no. on that. My goodness. <clears throat> oh, no. Yep. Dirt watches while still going through the armor for stuff. Yes, so... um broken healing bomb. <laughs> Uh, you realize this. Uh, Triss is actually consuming the sword. It's not the same not thing that happened before, right? It's no. actually Triss consuming it uh, and it becoming part of them. Um, it's... Oh. oh, and there's one more thing, sorry. As mm -hmm. they do this, what you hear is, This tastes amazing! <laughs> um, and uh, you, you realize what's happening. Uh, because you you feel that suddenly there's an opening in the what you realize is a very thin membrane that separates Triss from the outside world. Triss can change shape and change the, their compos like not composition but their their like etherealness and and solidity. Um, but always there's something in there, and that thing if it touches anything inanimate or alive or whatever it's going to be very very bad news Triss is raw chaos encased in a very thin protective shell made of somebody's magic somebody who summoned them to this world uh, and now the sword penetrates through the cover through the shell and just gets consumed by whatever is inside um Triss basically what this sword does is slice through uh, hard materials. It's just it's, it's sharp like a razor. Even if it's huge and heavy, it you can cut things. Uh, you can cut through things very neatly and sharply, even though it's a huge sword. Uh, what kind of ability do you want to manifest right now? Um, what happens? So in order to manifest, because Triss is going to take some of the magic, some of the entity, some of the purpose of this sword, mm -hmm. and. What they what what happens is that there are almost it feels like a rush, and the wall that was in front of us, the sort of dead end that we had death sensed into, is is quite literally almost pushed, like not pushed over, but it, it's almost cut away. It's just taken away. It doesn't exist anymore. And when the dust settles, it's just normal tris. Hiccup. Uh, you see, you see, dirt taking his um, his pitchfork and just kind of going like. <laughs> Tris, are you quite all right? What happened? Oh, that's with the sword. I was going to ask. No, I that. didn't. You did? <laughs> I have. I can't. <laughs> Grebel, do you need some of this armor from this knight that I killed? I'm not sure I can wear it. He said he was a giant and I am a quarterling. I'm not but sure. But maybe you just take it. like maybe take the shin plate and put it on your chest. Uh is there any part of this armor that looks like <laughs> something I could use? I, I I remember I can make a thought and we can reshape it into a different shape. I believe Based on, because uh, I'm not particularly strong, I uh, I might struggle to to walk around wearing something too heavy. That's why I was only in a gambeson before. Yeah, I'm not sure you'll be able to wear plate armor, even if it is made to your uh, size. Uh, if it's a partial thing, like some chain and plate, we can talk about it and see what the system says. I'm not sure I remember exactly what's the limit for you, but it's it's not going to be um, it's not. Uh, going to be easy for you to find heavier armor that you can use. Did I find anything else um, usable or interesting? <laughs> um, <laughs> you're Hiccupin too. Was that for real? <laughs> yeah, empathy. I see. Empathetic uh, hiccups. Yeah. yeah, we get them all the time. Uh, sure, yeah. There's... Um... So, Dirt, you are... Uh... You uh, search 
the body, <laughs> like we we always do, of uh, you the giant. Um, so you you take off the armor, you check what's underneath it. So yep. the first thing you realize is that this I take is off not all the armor. So this is not completely a human. Uh, this is a, a this is a man's face, a man's head, that is set on a body that has been. Some of the parts of the body, most of the rest of the body, has been replaced with uh, synthetic parts, with other materials that seem like a combination of metal, glass, and some other materials that have been shaped in the, the shape of limbs and organs of the body, but they're not. They're just a way to move around in the armor, like a, a, a magical construct of some sort. Um, uh, some of the arms are still meat and flesh and, and bones and the head is still a head but all, all the rest of the body has been replaced uh, and yeah it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a marvelous machine it's something very complicated and weird have any of you ever heard of anything like this? I mean I've heard of uh, elementals I've heard of things made out of different materials but not right something like this that's made up out of all multiple different types i only heard of things like a glass elemental is all glass but never something like this that's multiple different types all at once uh itamar mm -hmm. considering the endemic and the kind of creatures that tris might have seen has tris seen anything like the hue in front of us right now um, there was something that's a little bit familiar. I'm, uh, I'm wary of saying that you've seen something like this or that's really like this, but the, the closest thing that you've seen is the, you remember the creature that hunted you, the metallic, uh, soldier creature that chased you down when you first met the rest of the party. You had a whole fight with it, um, like all of you together. Atlas saved me. Yeah, exactly. They saved you from. Wait, the, did that happen? From the hunter. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, when they came ago. down the beanstalk and and. Sure, they're... sure. I definitely remember. That. <laughs> it was before. Uh, let's say nobody remembers it because it was before we were on the air. Actually, it was a past <laughs> adventure. Nobody actually saw uh, on Twitch or YouTube. So uh, that creature, that kind of creature. They like they have ways to animate golems, like inanimate things, to become uh, uh, animate and thinking thinking creatures that can serve them. Um, so maybe it's similar to this. You're not sure though. Uh, Tris kind of goes over to the head and pats it. Says, "I'm sorry." <clears throat> And then climbs back on Atlas and kind of. Oh wait, but where's the uh, death energy coming from? Is it? Wait, it's not from Hugh, right? No, it's not from Hugh. Dirt. Before I answer this, Dirt, roll a d20, please, to see what you yeah, find. Yeah, he does. D20. Nineteen. Dang. Nineteen. Nineteen is. Bad. Cool. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's a box. Uh, it's a metallic box with a, a screw-on lid. Uh, I need it. Wide and quite <laughs> flat. Uh, it has uh, um, some leaves, um, like um, you know, uh, s uh, painted onto it. Uh, uh, green leaves. Um, it's just a little, like a little bent and rusty, but it seems uh, whole. Can I open it? Sure, yeah, you open it. Uh, inside, there are coffee beans. They have a very, very powerful smell. Like a very strong coffee smell. <coughs> Grable. I throw it at him. What? Like two. <laughs> Did you close it before you threw it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, Grubble, you oh. smell the beans. Yeah, quite do, nice. Do you like coffee? I, I do, but maybe not this strong, but I do. So it's a very powerful, strong coffee. Uh, write down that it's a box of uh, juju coffee beans uh, juju. that can serve juju. if you uh, eat it. Uh, among, it's capable of many things. It's a D12 risk die if you use it to do certain things. 
at the very least, if you consume them or are capable of uh, of uh, using them, like preparing them into coffee and then drinking the coffee, it can serve as a magical reagent. What? I knew you needed that. Spells. Magic coffee. Yep. I love it. <clears throat> it's you. They no, it's H U G H. Chat. Let me write down Hugh for you. That's that's what Hugh. Baby, it's you. Hugh the you giant. Um. You the one. No. <laughs> sure. Um. <laughs> No problem. Oh, you know what? Yes. I'm going to write down <laughs> you the giant because it's been decided. <laughs> of great sword of you the giant. All right. That's the way it is now. Okay. So, um. Well, which doesn't exist anymore. Sorry. None of them actually is right. there around anymore, but that's what used to be the case. Uh, yeah, there's an opening in the wall right ahead, like five meters ahead, there was another dead end, or s seemingly a dead end. Now there's like a crescent shape, just missing part that's big enough for all of you to walk through one by one if you want to. And beyond that, there are lights. It's dark, dusty. Let's put the Aquas first. Uh, and there's something that gives off a faint light in there. Uh, Atlas, whatever uh, uh, you feel is right in the middle of that chamber behind that wall. Ooh. Chamber? Yep. Ooh, Whoa. Atlas, let's see. <laughs> I like the shape. I wonder how that happened. That seems strange. Hello? Ooh, Ooh look, there's an echo. It's Dirt using Omenomini to make Chris's voice <laughs> It's echo. Dirt just using his real voice. He's not even <laughs> trying. Hello. <clears throat> I will remind you because we didn't uh, say so uh, clearly before that, but uh, uh, Wilk stayed outside. She was with you. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, I forgot. Wait, Wait how, how do we spell Wilk anyway? W-I-L-K. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. Just, just so I know how to spell ship names. <laughs> <laughs> wibble it's all it about that wibble wilk like that um <laughs> perfect next week the debut um so uh wibble is such a funny name wibble is good wurt oh wurt <laughs> a grilk <laughs> The uh, it could just be Willis too. Triss's uh, yeah, uh, Triss's uh, uh, call into the opening echoes through uh, the large chamber uh, beyond the wall, uh, the opening in the wall, and um, except for the echo, you can all hear uh, a slight buzz. There's something buzzing there, like a Is big. Do you think it's a hornet? Do you think they have mead? Does it seem like this is where the source of the heat is as well? And the death? Uh, it is hotter here, yes. Well, let's try to... Let us try to make our way inside slowly and carefully and quietly. Hello. No, 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 no speaking, please. Just quiet silence. Just for a bit, all right? Let's play a game. Tris, you like games, right? I do like games! <laughs> right. In this game, you win by being the quietest. You want me to turn myself off? No, just uh, try to make as little noise as possible. Mm. Person who makes the least noise wins. Ooh! Right. I'm not good at that. Okay! Uh, you, can, you can still try. Just give it a shot. You don't get better until you try. That's true. Try, try again. Okay. Um, Atlas, Atlas. what are the rules again? <laughs> Grable, put the bubble over their face. <laughs> I mean, actually, you say that, I wonder if I did put Triss in a bubble, if it would uh, make Triss quiet. Ooh, a bubble! I haven't done See? it yet. It was a good kind of a suggestion. Should I do it now, then? It's a rouge suggestion, friends. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to bubble a friend. No. 
Well, You're not going to gonna non-consentingly bubble a friend? Thank you. No. I, I, I might. that line in the sand. I yes. might should the situation demand it, but I wouldn't say the situation demand it. <laughs> to be fair, if you told Tris that you were going to like give them a bubble to play with yeah. and not, they would have been stoked. So, yeah. but if you do it to them without telling them, they'll be hurt. That's true. Gotcha. Good to know. Oh, we, we enter the room. I <laughs> yes, Quiet. eventually you do. Um, so uh, um, y you walk one by one through the opening. Uh, the, the, the cut in the wall that creates this semi-crescent shape is, is razor sharp. Uh, the, whatever magic it was that was released from Triss that cut away the wall left... Uh, 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 razor sharp edges as if it was like a, a razor that cut off a piece of, of cheese uh, uh, and not a, a steel wall. Um, uh, you walk through uh, the room behind is quite uh, quite large and there's a long wall at the back of it uh, that has a bunch of machines. Uh, it's, it's many small chambers that are connected to the wall, and many of these chambers are connected through large, with large tubes to the wall and to each other. There's like a whole network of lines, wires, tubes of varying shapes and uh, uh, sizes that connect these, um, these chambers uh, uh, that are about the size of a large cupboard uh, to, um, uh, uh, to, to other machines up in the ceiling to other uh, uh, tubes, uh, uh, like ways that run uh, uh, up above your, your uh, head through out from the walls and into the ceiling and out through other openings. Um, and, uh, and it's all very, very quiet. The buzz and the faint light that you can see in this room is on the opposite wall in the middle. One of the chambers is lit up and you can see that inside this chamber, beyond the glass, that is the front wall of this this uh, this chamber. You can see uh, human form suspended in liquid. Ooh! <clears throat> this mm. is what you feel. Atlas, was. you lost the game. <laughs> right, silly me. Uh, as soon as you say this, uh, uh, you came the... second last. <laughs> uh, don't you won. The, the room, uh, the buzzing sound immediately intensifies and the room lights up. Those large dark panels, those windows that lead to nowhere, apparently uh, uh, can give off light. And the whole room is just washed in bright white light. You can see the shattered glass and the ruins of many, many devices and machines. You can see that all the other chambers are uh, either destroyed or uh, have uh, cracks running through them. All the liquid has run out and dried up on the floor in puddles. And the people inside them, the human forms, are all long gone. Uh, the only one that's still uh, whole and lit up from the inside is the one that you see in front of you, the one that is still partially alive. And then a voice sounds from all around you. Ooh. A nice voice saying, good evening. Would you like to ask me anything about the cryogenic chamber? Or would you like to try any of the chambers yourself? Uh, Are those the only two options? Guys, cryo involves uh, freezing, just so you know. Oh, I don't like oh. freezing. I may run diagnostics for you or answer any Hi. other questions. Who is talking? I am the computer in charge of the cryogenic chambers. What is a computer? What, what is a computer? It is me. It is a machine capable of answering your questions. Right. Ooh, okay. ooh, ooh, is it because it's made out of pewter? Dirt, maybe you can talk to it better. Ooh, it's true. Are you, are you a metal being? I am made of uh, mainly metal, silicon, and plastic. What is plastic? Would you like to run any diagnostics or ask me, any, ask me anything else about the cryogenic chambers? What I'm more interested in plastic. I'm what also is it? What, what is a cryogenic chamber? It is a chamber that can house a human form for unlimited amounts of time. What happened to the dead ones that are on the, the ground and dried up and stuff? Running diagnostics. Oh, okay. Diagnostics must be like an investigation. Oh, that makes sense. All chambers, except for chamber number five, have stopped operating. 
the subject of chapter five. Away. Um, what do I? What do we see inside chamber five? Uh, chamber it's. Five. Do we know which one is chamber five? The one in front of us. The one with a person oh. in it. Uh, it's it's as I said, it's a it's a human humanoid form. It looks like a person. Uh, it's suspended there in the liquid. Um, you can, if you if you get closer to take a closer look, uh, you will see that it looks like uh, a man with long hair. Uh, it's wearing tight clothes that uh, uh, like uh, that hug. Leave little to the imagination. Ooh. Yeah, it's very tight. It it really shows like the shape of the body. Uh, it seems Ooh. to be quite lean and muscular. Um, Mm, mm, mm. Sorry, uh, but other than that, it's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> I like that coming out of Atlas's like <laughs> mask. No, that was <laughs> definitely me. <laughs> oh, Talia. Uh, com- oh, com- my, not computer. Yes. Uh, who, who is in chamber number five? Chamber number five houses subject number five. Right. And, uh, oh, do they not have a name? Their name is Drillium. About information. Sorry, say again. Their name is Drillium. Drillium. Yes. Drillium. Uh, can you tell us more information about uh, subject number five, please? Uh, Drillium is uh, a member of the platoon of fighters uh, kept oh. in these cryogenic chambers. Oh. While they're saying this, Dirt is like exploring to try to find like where. I, I, I'm. I feel fairly certain that Dirt's never really like seen technology at all. Um, so Dirt's like totally looking around for you know whatever because like the screen threw him off uh, earlier and now this is complete like new. So just kind of looking around to see where like the sources of things are or whatever. Um. So what do you do in order to find out? Examine my surroundings. I mean, the voice... Uh, It's really unclear where the voice comes from. It seems to be echoing from all directions at once. Um, Um, The light... Looking... Inspecting, like, the... The... The the broken machines and, like, seeing if there's, like, plugs in the wall or cables or buttons or what. Uh, Yeah, okay. So you can find one of the chambers. uh, One of the ones that were... uh, that the, the glass was shattered and uh, I climb in. the person inside it died a long time ago. Um, Pull him out, I climb in. Uh, cool, oh, dead. yeah. Perhaps. You fit in, you fit in the chamber. Inside the chamber there is uh, uh, a body. Uh, well, dirt pulled the body out, so now it's just dirt there. Uh, there is a puddle of this liquid that stayed like uh, at the bottom of the chamber. Your, your, your feet are in it right now, splashing around. Um, and there is actually a button from inside the chamber. I push it. <laughs> All right, there's like a static sound a coming from the wall. Does it stop when I pull my finger off? I don't like this. Did, did the sound stop when I release the button? Yeah. I push it and I say, hello. Uh, all right. The figure inside the chamber opens their eyes. And Nine, five. Yep. Yeah, he looks. Um, he looks out at Atlas, right at you. Um, you hear. Oh, he's um, alive, not dead, Atlas. Uh, you can all yeah, I see, can see that. You can all see that he opens his mouth and he talks. Uh, but he's completely suspended in the liquid. Uh, there's no voice that comes out except to your ears, Dirt. Uh, through the uh, uh, panel behind the button, you can hear her, his voice, which is covered in uh, uh, crackling static sound around, static noise around it. Am I alive? Please, help me. Save me. Do I know that it's only coming to me? Uh, you can. I mean, it's quite faint, and you can guess that only you're hearing it, and the others don't. Am am I alive, or any of us really alive? I mean, how do we know? It's hard to say. What's your name? 
Are you talking to him, Dirt? To who? The guy in Chamber 5 is moving his lips. Oh, cool! Yes, um, uh, uh, hello, 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 Breaker Breaker, number five. Uh, I am number five. Uh, my name is, Come. is Drillium, who are you? My name is Dirt. Come and play! Get me out of here, please. How? 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 I How? think we should get him out, guys. He, we he should... wants to come out. We Not just that, but also we need to turn this thing off, and I'm worried if we turned it off with him inside, he might die. Ask the computer. Uh, com... computer. Good evening. Um, how do we, uh... How do we get... Subject number five out without him dying like everyone else did. Would you like me to stop the cryogenic uh, uh, suspension? Uh, but that's what happened and everyone else died, so... How, how do we do it so he doesn't I think die? it's worth the risk. He will be resuscitated. Oh, great. Uh, that means that he, he stays alive, guys. Um, I can heal. All right. Cool. Uh, yes, please. There's uh, the light flashes, uh, and then everything uh, uh, dies down again. You uh, you are again in darkness, except for this one chamber in front of you, chamber number five, which is lit by the emergency lights from within. Uh, the chamber opens, and Drillium just washes out with a wave of this gooey, not quite water liquid uh, out on the floor. Uh, he he. Uh, uh, just slowly, slowly rises on his uh, uh, hands, looks at you, and says, uh, uh, There's a terrible disaster coming. I must warn everybody. And we will end this episode what? here. What? What? The, Julian. Uh, Wait, can you describe Julian, like, physically? So I know, like, who to ship him with. Dr <laughs> <laughs> Drillian, though. Wasn't Drillian. It? Uh, Drillium is uh, a, a, a handsome man, uh, pale with uh, long blonde hair, muscular and lean. So yeah, kind of like a Fabio figure. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, he actually is very handsome uh, and well built. Um, so um, I'm just gonna type Fabio figure into Google. <laughs> let's go right ahead. I recommend all of our viewers do that right now, uh, and I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, we will return to that very instant next week uh, in our next episode of Questers of Yelpalor. Um, uh, it's very exciting. The first episode with a new design uh, and the new uh, Twitch layout and everything else that we're uh, uh, trying out this week. Um, we'll be back uh, next week, same time and place, which is 7.30 Central European time and 8.30 Israel and Finland. Uh, thank you, Matt, Jada, Taya, and Trent. Thank you, everyone on Twitch uh, who watched thank us. Thank you. Until up. next week, stay safe, play hard, and have fun. Bye-bye, everyone.